Hallelujah today. Praise God. The Lord is good. He's always good. He's always good. Hallelujah. Back in 1992, I was living in self-pity in a backslidden state. And I was watching the news um, on television. It was in the winter time. It was a cold winter that winter. And I saw a report of the people in Russia, people like us here in America, human beings. And it was after the Berlin Wall fell and everything, and, and they had these food shortages. And the people were standing in long lines, real long lines around the corner at the bread shop, waiting a real long time, like a week or two, they'd get in line. Somebody from their family would stay in line so that they could get some hard bread to eat. Because at that time, everything was, uh, shortages were real prevalent right there in Russia. And my heart was just grieved, you know, and I was just sad for those people standing out there in below zero weather, you know, in Moscow and Leningrad and all over Russia. And so then after the news, went up to Albertson's grocery store and walked in there, and boy, it was just full, packed full of food, wide aisles, and it was nice and warm in there. And when I got to the bread aisle, there was like, oh, a hundred different varieties of bread, all sorts of rolls and everything, you know, and, and my heart was just grieved. You know, I was thinking about that newscast, watching those people over there, and and uh, the Lord spoke in my heart, and he said, uh, he said, I'm taking it all away so that my people will look to me for what they have need of. And that, that has stuck with me and stuck with me, that word that God gave to me back in 1992. And I see it coming now to fulfillment and this next year, in 2009 and 2010, we're going to be seeing the taking it all away that God spoke to me in 1992. And out of curiosity, yesterday I typed in David Wilkerson's uh, name in the search engine, and I found his vision, that he had this vision in 1992. And I'm going to read part of the vision to you. The people were asking him, you know, is this, you've heard the vision before and the prophecy that he received about the thousand fires in New York City and everything, and then um, he talks in there, people were asking him, is this uh, the September 11th, was that what you were prophesying back in 1992? And he said, no, not at all. This is David Wilkerson. He says, no, not at all. What I saw coming will be much more severe indeed. If America rejects God's call to turn back to him, we'll face the same judgments Israel faced. That's very prevalent right there, very key word right there. The same judgments Israel faced. And America has not repented. America has not repented as a nation. Uh, they've killed more babies and they've killed more people, innocent people, in unjust wars and it's just a wicked thing that America is doing in in the earth today. It's that uh, it's it's a it's a beast. It is a beast. America is trampling down nations and peoples, um, and they will hit not only New York but also every region in the country. Okay, All right. every region in the country, even the heartland, won't be spared. The nation's economy will collapse, and we see that happening right now, collapse. And violence will erupt. Fires will consume our cities, and tanks will rumble through the streets. And he goes on to say, perhaps you wonder, as I have, can any of this be avoided? He says, yes, absolutely. I believe we'll be given a reprieve if, if our president proves to be a Josiah, which that hasn't happened. And it's not going to happen with Obama. Uh, the presidents of these of this United States are people that run the CEO of corruption and run the CEO of uh, total degradation and filth and licentiousness. Okay, 
and that's what uh, the Statue of Liberty represents, not freedom, but freedom from restraint, okay? Freedom from restraint to do whatever you want to do. And when you become a Christian, the Bible teaches us we become servants. We become slaves of Jesus Christ. A slave doesn't do what he wants to do. A slave does what he's told, okay? And when we're not doing what the Lord teaches us to do, what he speaks to our heart to do, we're sinning, okay? We're falling by the wayside. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes in and gently reproves us and, and sometimes sharply reproves us and rebukes us and gets us back on the narrow way. Hallelujah. And this word, you know, I, I say, okay, Lord, what about the judgments of Israel? So you go over to Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel chapter 4, starting at verse 9. God's telling Ezekiel, you're a symbol, you're a sign, Ezekiel, okay? See, God uses his prophets and his, and his messengers as signs sometimes to the body of Christ, okay, to the church, all right? And we know that Israel is the church, hallelujah. That's what Stephen spoke in Acts chapter 7, the church in the wilderness, hallelujah. He says, and you take to yourself wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and spelt and place them in a single vessel. And make them for yourself into bread to the number of days that you are lying on your side. You shall eat it 390 days. And your food which you shall eat shall be by weight, 20 shekels a day from time to time. You shall eat it, and you shall drink water by measure, the sixth part of an hen from time to time. You shall drink, and you shall eat cakes of barley, and you shall bake it with dung of the excrement of man in their sight. This is a bad famine. Okay, And Jehovah said, even so the sons of Israel shall eat their defiled bread among the nations there where I will drive them. Then I said, ah, Lord, Jehovah, behold, my soul has not been defiled. I have not eaten, even eaten a carcass or a torn animal from my youth even until now, and unclean flesh has not come into my mouth. Then he said to me, see, I have given to you the dung of cattle in place of the dung of man. And you shall make bread over it. And he said to me, Son of man, behold, I am breaking the staff of bread by weight and with anxiety. And they shall drink water by measure and in horror, because they will lack bread and water. And each one will be stunned with his brother. And they will waste away in their iniquity. Okay? Now this is the word of the Lord from Ezekiel. God is judging not only America, but the whole world. And we must remember as Christians to be close to Jesus and stay in Christ. Okay, that's where we're safe. David said in the Psalms that he's never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. Okay. And we won't, when we're in Christ, he's going to provide for us what we need. Okay. And... Somehow we've been trained to believe we have to eat three meals a day and, 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 and all the appetizers and all this other stuff. But I'm telling you, you don't need that much food to be intaking into your bodies to survive, okay? If this is all a luxury we've been experiencing these last, you know, 70 years in America since uh, World War II, you know, the boom, the... Just the, the total materialism and, and all the fullness of everything, fullness of bread, idleness of time, okay? That's the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, according to Ezekiel 16, 49, okay? Um, and this is what America has been. And now we're coming to a different time, the time of sorrows that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, and it's going to ratchet up. It's going to get harder and harder and harder, okay? But he told Jeremiah, he said, Behold, I have made you a defense city. Hallelujah. See, and God has made us a defense city. In Zechariah chapter 2, it says that Jerusalem shall be encompassed, you know, with a wall of fire. Okay. And Jerusalem means city of peace. Are you a city of peace today? Am I a city of peace? We have to have that peace of Jesus reigning in us. And we will make it through this time. And he will provide. Because he is our provider. But we mustn't look to man. Cursed is the man that trusts in man and maketh flesh his arm. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord.